From the center of the universe, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, this is the SDM Show with your host, Rob Cairns. The SDM Show focuses on business, life, productivity, digital marketing, WordPress, and more. Sit back, relax, grab your favorite drink, and enjoy the show. Here is Rob. Hey, everybody. Rob Cairns here. I'm the founder and chief creator of Amazing Ideas at Stunning Digital Marketing. I hope you're all doing well today. In this podcast, I have my good friend, Laura Adamonis, joining me, and we are going to talk about her amazing WordPress journey. Sit back, relax, grab a drink, and enjoy the show. This podcast is sponsored by Stunning Digital Marketing, the agency that can help protect your WordPress website today. Go to stunningdigitalmarketing.com and see what we can do to help you protect your business investment. That's stunningdigitalmarketing.com. Hey, everybody. Rob Cairns here. And today I'm here with my good friend, Laura Adamonis. How are you today, Laura? I am great, Rob. How about you? Doing good. You, you've had an exciting last week. We were kind of chatting before we went to record. You've been at WordCamp. We'll talk a little bit about that. you got all kinds of things on the go, which is great. And um, for those who don't know, Laura and I first met in a group called Build Mode, which is a group that Brian Gardner runs, uh, where we get together every Friday and we talk about uh, full site editing and blocks and Gutenberg and all that good stuff. And uh, it's been such a pleasure to get to know you, Laura. Thank you. Yeah. So I wanted to start with what I like to start with is what was your WordPress origin story and how did you get into this community originally called WordPress? All right. So uh, my story is pretty uh, new. Uh, I've only been doing WordPress since March of uh, last year. Yeah. And uh, I was a previous educator at the local science center. I did, I was a robotics coordinator, which meant I got paid to play with Legos. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I taught kids from five to 14, um, Lego engineering, uh, robotics. And then I started to bring in coding. So I was doing uh, the scratch base and block based coding, uh, hour of code, which I love code.org, uh, things like that. Um, I was at the point that I wanted to have my weekends off. And so I resigned from a fabulous job that I loved part-time. Uh, and I was just kind of uh, doing stuff around the house and scrolling through social media, came across a, a group on Facebook, uh, kind of joined that and turned out that they had a sister group uh, that was teaching coding to predominantly women uh, that either wanted to you know, change something in their life, uh, wanted to make a career change kind of thing. So I really liked the philosophy and the people who were running it. So I joined that program uh, in March of last year. And uh, I took my time since I did not need to uh, turn around and uh, make money right away. And uh, so I've learned that. And I, in August of last year, I launched my own website design company called Add a Little Digital Services. And uh, kind of a play on my last name of Adamonis. So um, yeah. had used yeah. that previously for a little, you know, side wreath making uh, venture years ago uh, at a craft, craft place. And uh, so I've been doing that and just trying to get known in the community and uh, learn about the social media and posting and all that and uh, learning about more about WordPress. And 
that's how I met uh, Brian. Uh, he was uh, one of the contributors to this program and uh, found out that he was originally is in Chicago and I'm originally from Chicago. So I reached out to him and said, hey, we're, we're, we have a Chicago connection and uh, he's a big Taylor Swift fan and uh, I am too. So uh, we had a lot in common on that instance. So we kind of, you know, have that that's been great that he started the build mode and I was the, you know, new person as a fly on the wall, as I say. And, but I loved listening to the conversations with everyone and kind of learning stuff and then coming back and slowly I was able to be, become part of those conversations, which is really cool. Um, and that has helped with my confidence within it and to be able to say, Hey, I can talk to the, the big wigs here. You know, I, I, and I don't know a lot, but I, now I know people within the industry that I can ask questions about. And it's been a great community that they're, it's very supportive in that instance that, you know, just ask. Um, yeah. There's so, some really, there's some really great people. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's funny. Um, early on, Brian was on uh, Nathan Wrigley's Page Builder Summit one year, and uh, they got to a conversation, and Brian left it open before he started build mode and left it open and said, I'd really like to um, carry this conversation on. He was on with Nick Diego, and they did a, a talk about blocks in the early days, and he made the mistake of saying that. So, of course, me being who I am, sent him a tweet and said, oh, you want to continue the conversation? When, where, how, and when are you signing up? And here's a link. <laughs> I, know. I know Brian a long time, and he just kind of laughed at me and said, only you. And I'm like, yeah, but you asked for it. So, And, and, and to be fair, he's been like, he's one of those many awesome people in our community that we, that I adore. And I, I mean that seriously, kidding aside. And yeah. yes, he's yeah. a, he's a big Taylor fan, and so are you. We can, I don't think we can start off a build mode without a Taylor Swift conversation anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and, you do, and you do know she has six sold-out dates at the Rogers Center in Toronto coming. And yeah. if anybody, little hint for you Taylor Swifties is there's three, there's four days in between. And Taylor has nothing on their schedule, and Roger Center has nothing in their schedule. So I'm throwing a big hint out there. I suspect there's probably going to be two more dates before it's up. So, and Roger Center holds about 50,000 for a concert. So, you know, pack your money and uh, good, good luck on that one. <laughs> the, the resale tickets, Laura, just for interest sake, are a hundred and sixty dollar ticket is selling for a thousand dollars right now. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It it unfortunately is not a cheap ticket. So it's not a cheap ticket. One of the reasons I stopped going to concerts it became yeah stupid. So so you're in the WordPress community. You're fairly new, so your perspective is a little different than people like mine or people like Brian's. I'm sure or people like Courtney's or even. Uh, Peter Eagle from um, Build Mode. I'll throw those names out there because they've been around mm -hmm. a long time. Um, what's the biggest challenge you see for somebody new in the community? Like, what's the biggest thing that you you find yourself navigating? Um, I think the basic thing is that there's so much out there. There's so many different ways to build a website um, because of the fact that you have the core WordPress. Then you have all these different page builders uh, that, you know, you, people love to use because it's just kind of a point and click thing, which is yep. great. And I, I and I understand the ease of that. So I have been dealing with the frustration because I've tried to stay true to the core um, and I have not delved into um, page builders for uh, for my instance. So um, which could be good or bad because I know that for uh, future clients, that might be something that I need to learn uh, for that. Uh, so I'm open to, to learning that eventually, but trying to kind of just use the core tools um, that can be a little frustrating. And uh, there have been a lot of updates and new releases. Uh, and I know that we're, 
WordPress is, you know, the core team is trying to make it better and bring in those kind of tools that you see within page builders. Uh, so I think it's just overwhelming for a lot of people who are in the WordPress uh, community that um, it's happening so quickly that they can't yep. learn while working, while trying to please their clients. Um, so I always tell people, you know, you got, I just talked to my friend, she was trying to switch over to frost and, um, I'm like, you know what, if it's too much for you, you have to use what you are comfortable with, you know, and especially with, uh, trying to relaunch a business and stuff like that. Uh, she already has websites up with stuff that she already knows. So don't, don't try and, and learn something new at a pivotal point, you know? Um, and especially a big site that she was doing. Yeah. But, that said, I would suggest the best way of learning something is to take a project and use that project as a learning tool. So mm -hmm. one of the things I did two years ago in September, I started, I said, I want to learn blocks. I, I'm, I'm going to go that road. I like to say minimal. I'm going to learn blocks. And at that time, I decided, and I said, no, no, I'm going to learn blocks. I'm going to learn cadence blocks. So I, those who know me know I in build mode. I'm one of those um, pushers of cadence, if you want to call it that. Um, Kathy Zant, who's the marketing manager over at Cadence, is a good friend. I was in with cadence before Kathy took that job, and uh, but even more so. And I think Ben Rittner's an awesome developer. So I made that decision. So what did I do? Because I like to push the envelope, as those in build mode know. I decided to make the changes to a live site <laughs> over <laughs> three months. So I, I did all the blog posts. Then I did all the pages. Then I flipped the theme. And then I changed the theme. I went to Cadence as a, as a base theme. And I did that on a live site over uh, a multitude of months and anybody who wants to hear that journey if they go back to the archives of the show i did a, a sit down with uh burger poly hack and matthias venture and matthias is the lead gutenberg lead after i did this and then we just did like a coffee style chat where we talked about what i liked what i didn't like and all that and that, that was two years ago Ever since then, I'm kind of all in with blocks, and I've used page builders, I've used Divi, I've used Beaver Builder, I've used um, I've used Elementor, I've used them all. Um, my biggest argument for not using a traditional page builder, because blocks is a page builder. I'm sorry, you can call it whatever. <laughs> it's a page builder. For is site speed score. The minute mm. I turned off Beaver Builder, my site speed score went up by 12 points overnight. And that's a fact. And you mentioned Frost. I actually have Frost running on one of my sites because Brian graciously, when he developed Frost, decided to include a link tree pattern in Frost. I don't know if you remember. So... All these people running around doing link for 10 bucks a month. Like, why would we do that? Um, Frost is, uh, Frost can do, WordPress can do that for you. So why do that? So I, I actually run Frost on one of my sites. So uh, I thank you to Brian for doing that. But uh, yeah. So what's the easiest thing you find in the community now that we've talked about the most difficult? <laughs> um, well, this a, a, the support and, um, yeah that uh, I'm a content, I started uh, contributing to the, uh, the learn.wordpress.org training team. Um, there's 22 different teams within the WordPress open source project, which is really awesome that um, all these people are volunteering their time or having sponsors and stuff like that. So with my previous education background, uh, I really liked, uh, the tutorials and lesson plans that were available for my continued education, um, because then a lot of the things were more up to date on the new releases and stuff like that. So I started contributing as a co-host 
to the workshops. And that's how I met our mutual friend, uh, Nick Diego on that. And being able to work with people from uh, Japan and New Zealand and all over the world, it just blew my mind. I mean, that was just a, a cool part of it. Um, you know, a lot of it happened because of COVID that we became virtual, but a lot of us have stayed virtual, which is um, continue to open up that vast um, world of working with people from other countries and stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. I would say I was probably virtual long before COVID. Um, I probably started... So my background um, is in IT and healthcare. Um, mm -hmm. I came out 14 years ago, I started my own agency. I've been virtual since. So I was virtual before it was fashionable, I would say. And I would say the nice thing today is the tools like Zoom and Meet and StreamYard, which we're recording on now, the tools are way better than they were when I started. So back in those days, it was Skype and more Skype and lots of Skype. And, yeah. You know, and, and things have changed. And that's just evolution in the tech, in the tech business, like a lot of a lot of evolution. And that's the important thing. So so I think the tools to be virtual are much easier today than they were like five or six years ago, even for the average person. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So I would do that. Um, so great. You getting involved in the, in, in learn and, uh, our mutual friend Courtney Robertson, I'm sure has been some help with that because Courtney was one of the learn coordinators for a long time. So. Yes. And it's really cool, uh, to hear her perspective of where she started it, uh, yeah. when she joined to where it is now. Um, which I'm, I, it, it always amazes me that it hasn't been around longer than it was, uh, has. So um, that's always a uh, really neat conversations to hear that and the, um, the people within that community. Yeah. So you're back to starting or trying to move your own agency along. How has that been so far? Has that been easy? Has it been hard? Is it, trying to find a client base. Uh, how, how's yeah. that? Going? Yeah, I think that's the hardest part. Um, I've talked to other people within the, the, the program that uh, we learned hosting and stuff. In fact, a group of five of us got to meet up at WordCamp, which was really nice. Um, yeah. And we're all kind of, uh, you know, in that boat of starting our own agencies and, um, you know, finding that client base, which way do you go? Um, uh, you know, social media posting and stuff like that, uh, reaching out to my um, local uh, business chamber um, is my next step and uh, getting to know. But it's it's so hard for, you know, us introverts, um, a couple of us, you know, just like actors and actresses that are are mostly introverts. I, I think a lot of tech people are introverts <laughs> that um, it, it struck, this is the part that we struggle with, you know, we wish that there was um, a place that just, you know, pop, oh, there's a job, there's a job for me, <laughs> um, yeah. instead of all this uh, kind of competition that we have to either lower our prices, which lowers our value um, in ourselves, and that um, I think that's the hardest thing of, you know, setting your prices and then going out and you want to help the small businesses. And but then you also, you know, would like to have a, a nice income come with that. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, pricing is always something that everybody struggles with and agency owners because we see the offshore stuff and we see the stuff coming out of India, the stuff coming out of Philippines, the stuff coming out, <coughs> excuse me. And I think they do not have the same expensive lifestyle that we have in North America. So as a result, um, they charge us. And that puts on a global scale that hurts. It does and it doesn't. Um, I took the attitude long time ago in my business that I don't play the pricing game. 
I get people all the time that ask me, oh, will you discount this? No. Will you discount that? No. Yeah. Uh, I'll go elsewhere. Okay. Feel free. A mm -hmm. uh, couple things that I decided a long time ago is fighting the pricing game is fighting the race to the bottom. And there's a really good book out there called The Inside Advantage by Robert Bloom. It's like one of my favorite books in this topic. And it's a big red cover. You can get it on Amazon. It was written in 2008, 2009. Um, the book comes to me by way of one Paul Toby. And if you know Paul, you might know his son, Adrian, who's actually the, the um, founder of Groundhog. Oh, okay, cool. office. And Paul's an old mentor of mine, and he recommended this book a long time ago. Um, it has been such an impact that I have actually had to buy a second copy because I wore mine out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and many clients who don't get it, I will make them buy a copy and read it before I will work with them. Because mm. what the book talks about is making your business different and why that's more important than fighting the race to the bottom. Yes. And the only business I can see the race to the bottom working is the dollar store business. And every other business, if you keep fighting the discount retail business, you're going to end up out of money sooner or later. It's really hard to do. So I would encourage people not to do that, to be honest, just to kind of not fight that. Set your prices. And remember, dude, it's more than your time. It's your expertise, your educational value, what tools you bring, um, what licenses you bring. Like I, I had somebody questioning me the other day, my security package pricing. And you know that a big part of my business is security. And we know in build mode, every time that top that comes up, Brian just sucks at me and said, did I just wake Rob up again? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm big on the security side. And what they forget is because I've bought lifetime licenses, I bring licenses to, to my packages that are, you know, on a $1,500 a year package. I'm bringing like $600 in licenses to that package. Like that's yeah, worth something, yeah. right? So. Yes. We can't, we got to remember it's more than time. If we want to play the time game, there's ways to play it, but I would I wouldn't suggest playing that. Yeah. So um so you're working on building the business, which is good. Um where do you want it to go? Do you want to do like more niche type of stuff or do you want to do more general or are you not sure at this point, Laura? Or? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm not sure. Um, I'm looking for the sign. I was. Ho I was hoping that um, going to WordCamp this past week um, was kind of the uh, clean slate of okay, what direction should I take things? Um, and we'll we'll see what happens in the next uh, couple of weeks and uh, and where that's going to take me. So. And and the other thing to do is, you know, in Friday build modes, keep asking those questions. Like, you know, yeah. that, that group's pretty welcoming. You know that. So it's a wonderful group. It's like a highlight of my week usually. And, um, you know, I think it's important that uh, we all have those and keep those conversations coming. Like they're really, they're really important, right? So. Oh, definitely. That's good. Um do you have any idea where you'd like to see it go in a couple of years or is that still part of the figuring out process? I think that's still the figuring out process. Um, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm at that crossroads where do I spend more time with, with building my agency or can I find a, yeah. a sponsor to uh, sponsor me with uh, doing the content creation for the training team? Uh, yeah. I think that's, uh, an important part of WordPress. We talked a lot about, I was part of the Community Summit, uh, which is a, a two-day event prior to WordCamp that yep. you apply for. And they invite people of kind of all different backgrounds, uh, people who have been in WordPress for a long time. But um, half of us were all new to WordPress, but we all have different backgrounds to start conversations. Uh, mm. And it was a, uh, 
a safe space because we weren't recording them. We did have a note taker who uh, took notes and those will be posted on the WordPress blog, which is cool to kind of go back. People submitted questions. Um, there was a lot of uh, diversity questions within that, um, but also the you know future of uh, contributors. How do we get contributors? How do we keep the contributors? Uh, so yeah. I am a, in that instance, um, had a lot of conversations with that um, of being able to uh, find and, you know, just work 20, 25 hours a week on content creation, but being supported by um, one of the WordPress companies involved with that. So that that's where I'm at with with that. And, um, you know, seeing that in the future, I would really like to continue on that that part of it, especially. And, and you know, if I'm able to take on one or two clients a, a month, um, that would be great. You know, that would be my ideal workspace. Yeah. yeah, it's people don't realize taking on unless you're doing something like security updates or stuff like that which is for me is reoccurring ev revenue but taking on a couple big cli clients a month you don't want to do that because then your time becomes it gets juggling and it gets hard and then it gets then your weekends disappear and your nights <laughs> disappear and i've already had a couple of those this week and uh with some long-time clients and it, it it just becomes fun uh, you know, I'm working on, I think I was saying in the last build mode I attended, I'm working on this big WooCommerce site right now that's got, oh, we're up to like 300 products and counting. And it's just oh, like, wow. yeah, and it's all variable products too. It's for a jewelry store. So it's all variable. So there's no, yeah. it's like, I want to buy this chain in this type of gold at this link. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> a lot of filters, a lot of uh, choices. Yeah. And it's it, it, and it's for a good friend of mine. I normally don't like to do builds like this if I can avoid it because the hardest part with builds is most people don't understand new builds are like, it's like buying options on a car, right? You go in and you buy your car. I want heated seats. We had this much more money. I want this in a radio entertainment system. We had this much. Well, yeah. website bills are exactly the same way. I want A, B, and C. So we add this money and this money and this money, right? And, but, and then, and then we all get into that wonderful term we all like to call scope creep, where pe where clients will try and sneak stuff in, and it's like, no, <laughs> <laughs> this is this isn't uh, what we agreed on, right? So it's hard. Um, have you managed to get uh, as you build your business? Have you managed to get things like your processes down a little bit, and things like your contracts down, and that kind of stuff? Or are you still working? On oh yeah, that? yeah. I mean, I. I Kind of that that's all been been there uh so uh but it then again you know just like the other other people i've talked to um that's that's the tough part the business side of it to uh, oh, yeah. to learn all that and make, making sure that you're paying taxes and what what does sales what sales tax do you uh pay on and all all those fun oh. things but uh our community has a great, um, our state and uh, county uh, have some great resources uh, that you can, um, and some workshops and stuff that have been really helpful. So um, yep. that's been really good on that instance. And um, yeah. it's worth mentioning a lot of, um, especially in bigger cities, a lot of the libraries are like the conduit for stuff like that. So yep. get involved. I do know in Toronto, they have the Toronto library has a big small business group and they have workshops and they have talks and they have, and I, and I don't mean just technical talks. I mean, talks about how to do the accounting for small business, how to uh, figure out dealing with uh, CRA, the dreaded Canadian revenue agency as a student, <laughs> and things like that. And like that stuff is as important as knowing how to code or how, and, my theory with that stuff always is is if you don't like doing it, which I don't like doing it, get somebody to do it for you. Like yeah. concentrate 
concentrate on what makes you money and what you do well with. Mm-hmm. That's oh, definitely. Great. That's so great. Um, where would you like to see the WordPress community go in the next couple of years? Anywhere special or beyond rewarding contributors more? Um, yeah, yes and yes. Uh, that Those were two topics that were um, big discussions between Community Summit and the actual um, WordPress um, conference uh, workshops and stuff was that a, we need to get out in the more pub in in the public more. It seems that people mention that I, you know, hey, I work with WordPress, and they're like, "What's that?" So, um, my new tagline is, "If if if ah uh, if Na- if WordPress is good enough for NASA and the White House, it's good enough for you." Yeah, that isn't that amazing that NASA's on there and, it, and WhiteHouse.gov has been on WordPress VIP for years. I mean, that's not a. But uh, what I would say is, I think one of the things we do as a, a community disservice to ourselves is we sell WordPress as a solution, and I don't think small business owners care. I hate to say it, they yeah. want to a website solution they could go in and make some minor updates to where they don't have to call a dev to do all their work. And they want to, um, they want a solution where they can just do it. And my argument would be sell what you give them, not WordPress, unless you're driving something WordPress specific like security or something else. That's a little different, but, it, but just for a website build, I wouldn't be selling what, uh, WordPress is a solution. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Does that? That, I mean, uh, I think big two is the uh, the dashboard. I think it needs to be more user friendly for the business, so that when you hand it over to the business owner, they can do um, minor updates without breaking it. Um, yeah, and I, I, know that I agree. A couple of people are taking that on outside of WordPress, and mm-hmm. um, it's it's nice to see that. I I'm hoping that um, WordPress will uh, take that into consideration and um, do a, a an update on their on the dashboard. Um, no, it's supposed to be in, it's supposed to be in six point four. I'm one, yeah. one of, the, I'm one of the, my biggest complaints, which you know where I'm going to go, is the media library. I'm just, uh, I, I am so done with the media. <laughs> and um, I talked to Ann McCarthy up at um, Automatic quite a bit. I'm on Ann's. She's got a rolling document that goes out to people every time we're in the middle of a release that kind of lists all the points in it. And uh, yes. I'm on that list. I'm glad I'm on, I'm thankful I'm on that list. Thank you, Ann. And so it kind of keeps me in the loop of what's going on and what's not going on. And um, I hope to, we see some of this stuff soon because, yeah, it will make a difference. I also think um, one of the things I want to see is some more block locking capabilities so we can lock clients out of playing with stuff because yeah. that's uh, part of a problem. The other thing I would add while we're talking about that is, folks, stop giving all your clients a bin rights to every website you set up. Don't do it. Give them access to what they need, not everything, just because they ask. Right. We don't do that in the enterprise world. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. It's okay to for them to have an admin user, but then Mm -hmm. they keep that away. But then they have also a login for just a user so that they don't have access to everything, but they do have the capability to access that if for some reason you part ways with them or, you know, you've moved out of the country and they can't get a hold of you. They can at least have some kind of admin, you know, in the vault, (laughs) in their vault, hide it away just in case you need it, uh, but don't use it kind of thing. Um, I'm not a big fan of taking client stuff and we've all seen it. A dev registers a domain for a client and then the client fires the dev and the dev says, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. I've got your domain name. I've been through that. It's awful. 
Yeah. Um, I had years ago, <coughs> one of my oldest clients who's been with me since day one, I had to file a dispute with ICANN to get their domain name back, even mm. though it was a trademark. And they and they kind of and they this dev thought, oh, we're gonna screw them over. And they were a political party too. And it was like, we'll just take it. It's like you know, you put the assets in the hands of where they need to be and educate your clients on the value of owning their own assets, right? Because yeah. that's important. And yeah. I would say especially with things like photos and stuff like that, especially with copyright. I I put all that in the hands of my clients. Their contracts say they're responsible for their assets and 100% responsible, which means I have no legal liability if they sneak something in that should not be there. We, we all know about the client that uh, posts right. a Getty images, image on their website of what happens when Getty comes calling, don't we? <laughs> right yeah so it's just uh you just got to be careful um do you have any advice to anybody who's going to jump in new into the wordpress space as you have and where they should start or where they should go um i want to touch back i'll answer that i want to touch back on one other thing that we had brought up oh. was um Acknowledging uh, WordPress contributors. Uh, that was another topic. That came to up. Yeah. And to, you know, um, see more of that uh, within the marketing realm of mm -hmm. letting the um, letting the world know what different people are doing, different companies are doing uh, within the Word, WordPress open source project is uh, mm -hmm. another thing that we kind of don't see a lot because um, I, I mean, I follow everyone on uh, all the major links and stuff like that. And I'm like, I scroll back through and I'm like, wait, there's like, there's no mention of this. There's no mention of that. Um, and I think we need to uh, do more of that. Um, I just found within our Slack channels that we have a props thing. So props is to acknowledge, you know, good work within our community. Um, but that needs to get to the um, the outside world too, uh, so wanted to make that point um, that that was a, a good point. One of the discussions. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, people have asked me how to to get started, and it you know there's all different ways. I had um, I feel that you know if you don't have a lot of resources um, financially. Um, then there are a lot of free resources. So the learn.wordpress.org is um, a great place for resources besides the tutorials. There's lesson plans, there's courses. Uh, next year, there will be a whole learning path for users, designers, and developers, um, which is like 12 to 20 steps that involves everything, which is awesome. Uh, that is in the works. And YouTube, uh, we have a lot of amazing people within WordPress that have their own YouTube channels that are a great resource to, to learn that. Uh, again, go, going back to the libraries, the libraries are, you know, will have resources, uh, classes. Uh, you might have a, a Goodwill does um, classes for for different uh, organizations and, and groups of people. Uh, I know that, uh, and I don't remember the name of it, uh, a project to help veterans get uh, WordPress experience so that they have that background and get certified yeah. in yeah. WordPress. Um, I know somebody's doing that aspect. So uh, the freer resources are out there. If you do have the financial support that you can buy into a program that um, will teach you about coding and there's different um, online video uh, universities as they call them kind of thing that um, you can get different certifications or, or just learn about it. 
but you do have to put the time in. I think that's the biggest thing that people think that just because you signed up for this and paid a lot of money um, that you'll miraculously learn to do it. No, you have to put in the time. You have to put in the effort. A lot of the videos that I went through, I had to go back and like restart. So mm -hmm. because I wanted to learn the process, especially with the uh, CSS and HTML coding part of it. Um, and then I still need to learn a little bit more about JavaScript uh, because of the newer uh, theme JSON file. Um, that is something that I'm weak on. So it's a con it's a constant learning process, I think, wherever you are within um, the website design developer you know, we're constantly learning new things. Yeah. It's one of the things that makes uh, working in tech so fun is it changes every day. And yes. uh, we don't have time to get bored. I, uh, I'm i pretty well a book a week guy. I try to read a book a week, no matter how busy I am. And uh, that's a big part of my learning is just learning, reading and understanding and understanding why we do things and why and how. So I think that's really important. I want to thank you, Laura, for um, sharing your insights today. As somebody newer in our community, I think it puts a different perspective on things. Like after you've been in this community, as long as I have, you, you see things in a different light. So your, your opinions and your insights are always greatly appreciated here and elsewhere. I hope you know that. If somebody wants to get a hold of you to talk about learn.wordpress.org learn or anything else, how's the best way? I have a contact form on my website at addalittledigital.com. And I'm also on Twitter or, or X. <laughs> X, formerly known as Twitter, is the style yeah. guy calls it now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm, and you can find me on LinkedIn too. So, yeah. And uh, if if you want to have some fun, come join us on a Friday build mode, and uh, and you can learn some more in that group too, right? Yeah. Our next one is September eighth. Um, and oh, I also want to give a plug out to Accessibility Day is coming yes. at the end of September, September twenty seventh and twenty eighth. It's twenty four hours of virtual uh, talks that will be shared. I will be hosting uh, several of those hours where I'll be introducing the speakers within a certain time frame. So I'm super excited about that. One of our build mode friends, Peter, will be actually an, a speaker uh, for that event. And it's such an important topic that, um, you know, if you don't know enough, if you don't know anything, if you, if you think you know anything, you need to learn more. Yeah. <laughs> so. It so true and uh come on out for that it's it's a key event and in many places accessibility isn't just a reality it's actually the law and people need yes. to realize it so you know in ontario if you've got a government website um or a public nonprofit website there are rules around accessibility folks <laughs> so it's uh yeah come learn something Thank you, Laura. You have an awesome day. Appreciate you as always. Thank you very much, Rob. You too. This show is brought to you by StunningDigitalMarketing.com, your Toronto leader in digital marketing services. Not only do we protect your WordPress website, we can help you with your site, provide social media management for your business, or even do one-on-one -on -one consulting. To find out more, go to stunningdigitalmarketing.com. A very special thank you to Laura for joining me on this edition of the SDM Show. Hey, everybody, Rob here again. Thanks for listening to the SDM Show. It's such a pleasure to have you every week. If you want more on our agency website, go to stunningdigitalmarketing.com. We are your WordPress security experts. We'd be glad to help you out. If you want to learn more about me, Rob Cairns, go to meetrobcairns.online. From there, you can find links to everything I do on the web, as well as 
book time with me. So feel free. If you want to make comments about this podcast or know a guest possibly suitable for the podcast, please email us at podcast at stunningdigitalmarketing.com. Or conversely, you can go to X, formerly known as Twitter, and tweet at me at Rob Cairns. This podcast is dedicated to my late father, Bruce Cairns. Dad, I miss you very much, and I love you. Please join us next week for another interesting podcast, and have a great week, everybody. Bye for now.